Okay, welcome back um, to our next class. Um, so we we've been we've been looking at certain foundations of uh, of marriage. We've uh, covered a couple of uh, um, chapters. We're going to be going back one one chapter, and this is one of the last uh, foundational truth that we're going to be looking at at this section. Uh, from next week, next to next lecture on, we're going to be looking at. Um, more practical elements of a of a good marriage okay so we so this is the one of the last foundational um uh, chapter that we're going to look at and one way to uh, to progress to oneness is by fulfilling roles in marriage okay so one of the ways we've been looking at how do we what does it mean to be one how what does it mean to build oneness so the last chapter we did look at a personal preparation of um uh, transforming our attitudes our temperament as well as our behavior to enhance this oneness right and um, now today we are going to be looking at fulfilling uh, the roles that um, God has instructed for us in Scripture. So, we, uh, you know, it, it's it's wonderful to know that uh, God just did not leave us in the lurch and um, help us try. I mean, you know, make us figure out what we need to be. What are the roles we need to be assuming when we are in this important institution of marriage? So when we look at scripture, we see that there are specific guidelines, specific instruction on the roles of a husband and a wife, on the way that we relate to one another, the way that we are in the marriage as well as in the family. So there are specific instruction. And what we're going to be doing in this chapter is to understand what does God expect of us um, as a husband and as a wife and learn to walk in these roles as well as uh, find contentment in these roles because they have been instructed and, and given to us by God. Okay, So this could mean a lot of um, changing in the way that we have thought about our own personal roles or the roles of our spouse. Okay, so be willing to unlearn, unschooled first, so that you can be schooled in the instruction of God's word, specifically on roles. Okay, so before we establish these roles, let's establish one main important truth about marriage, and that's what we find in First Peter three seven, uh, the verse that uh, uh, Charles was referring to. Okay. So 1 Peter 3, 7, uh, and, and I'm, I want to read it from another version, um, and I will read that. Okay, so 1 Peter 3, 7, it says, In the same way, you husbands must give honor to your wives, treat her with understanding as you live together. She may be weaker than you are, but she is your equal partner in God's gift of new life. If you don't treat her as you should, your prayers will not be heard. Okay, so what are we establishing right here? The first and foremost thing we are establishing here is that in marriage, God sees us as equals. Okay, the husband and the wife are equals and they are also joined as in all what God gives. In the grace of God, in the spiritual gifts, every grace that he releases, we are equal, we are joined as, we receive it together, okay? So this, what does this mean in practical terms is that none, either the husband or the wife, does not consider themselves superior or inferior or in a better um, standing with what, with who, with, with what, before God, okay? And they are treated equally because, in their status, spiritual status, we are 
equal and none of it is earned. You and I do not earn our status. It has been given, it has been a grace that's been given to us. So we do not look at each other as unequals, but we look at each other at the same power in whatever God has graced us with and we treat also each other as equals. So we are equals, we are joint as in every gift and grace, spiritual gift and grace that he has uh, released on to us. We are also interdependent. So we pick this up from two verses from a passage in 1 Corinthians 11, although it may not be co completely discussing about marriage, but we are taking the principles of it here. Okay, so it is in uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 11 to 12. In our life in, uh, in the Lord, However, woman is not independent of man, nor is man independent of woman. For as woman was made from man, in the same way, uh, man is born of woman. And it is God who brings everything into existence. So these verses emphasize that God designed both a man and a woman to be interdependent. That is, we mean we cannot claim that we can do things without the other. So a, a good thing about marriage is the opportunity to take from what my spouse may be strong in and receive support in what I may be weak in, right? So it is interdependence. And I'm sure each of you who may be married can find limitless examples and the way that God has placed the two of you all together so much so that there is interdependence right like if there is one person who is a more organized one there may be the other who's a little scatterbrained right or it, there must be one who is probably talkative the other one may be a bit more reserved. It could be. I mean, you, you could find so many combinations um, in, in this thing, you know, within, within marriage. But you are interdependent. And that's, that's the, the truth that scripture brings about. That when God sees us, it, it is not one person is one notch higher than the other. And he didn't design marriage so that there could be... Um, you know, beating down, it is in interdependence. So this truth that we establish as we get into this chapter on understanding roles is both a husband and wife is uh, an equal uh, and uh, they are joint heirs of God's grace and God's gifts and they are interdependent. They are designed to be interdependent so that, you know, you can do the work of God. Now, this often can this truth can sometimes be a challenge for um, for probably men who come from social cultural backgrounds who have been who have seen their you know their fathers or their grandfathers and the way that women are considered so from the culture i come from uh, now, in India, you have, you know, multiple states and each culture is very dynamic, very different, right? So in the culture that I come from, um, usually the, the um, so I remember my, my, my mother saying this, when, that when she first got married, she got married and, you know, the, my father's family was a big family, he's got six siblings. So when they would sit together for maybe food and, uh, you know, for a meal, all the men would sit first, okay? After the men finish, all the children would sit and only then the women sit, right? And by the time the, it comes to the women, probably the only things left is maybe rice and uh, probably some kind of, you know, maybe a curry or something like that. But all the good things would have finished by the time it comes to the women. So my my mom used to say that uh, my granddad, uh, so so when I'm talking about joint families, these are also times when there are uncles and, you know, grand uncles and like huge families. So sometimes, you know, a, a, a godly, a, a very respectful 
man, what he'd do is he'd take rice and, you know, if there was egg or if there was fish, which was, which was um, you know, not very common at that point of time for the whole family to eat. So it must be something that you eat once in a while. So he would put a fish in the, in the leaf and cover it with rice and uh, say that, you know, I've had enough and my wife will eat from my plate. So, and, you know, so that's how they would do that. So, so I do understand that the, the cults, there can be in different cultures, uh, it's it, the way that women are treated could be very different. But uh, we need to change our thinking and understanding, like I said, unlearn, unschool ourselves to what scripture teaches us that they are uh, equal joint heirs alongside with us okay so as we move into uh, so i'll take up questions maybe at the end so if you do have a question either you could put it up on the chat or uh, you know keep your question written and we'll, we'll handle that so we're going to be looking at specific roles of a of a husband and a wife now when we look at this role uh, the, the roles we do see that um, you know uh, uh, the the places where it it brings us brings this up is in ephesians 5 21 to 23 and you know you have similar uh, uh, emphasis made in first peter 3 1 to 9 as well okay and it reflects uh, a lot of what god instructs for a marriage and when we look at um, at the roles in marriage there is a parallel that we are given of the christ of, of christ to the church and it compares its relationship the the mar marriage relationship to the relationship uh, to the standard that is between christ and the church okay so if that's the standard god has set for us as husbands and wives, we need to know that, uh, like um, uh, Charles was saying, it's difficult. Yes, but when he has set a standard, you can be sure that he will empower you to do it if you're willing to walk in step with what he wants us uh, to be. Because scripture says, uh, you know, it is God who does and will according to his good purposes so so if we if, if if he births this desire in us he will equip us to be the husband and the wife that god wants us to grow into okay so what we're going to be doing is um we will read the the scripture and we will pick out uh the the roles that both the husband and the wife uh needs to um, you know needs to be instructed in so i will move into um Ephesians 5, 21 to 23, okay? And uh, I'm on page um, 42. Yeah, I'm on page 42. And I'm, I'm just, I won't probably go through everything, but I'm just going to highlight um, what is written in these, uh, uh, you know, the roles that are written in the verses. I'm not going to go through the entire uh, um, scripture. You can take time to read it after class but to help us see what have been specific instructions that have been given to us okay so i'm at ephesians 5 21 to 23 uh, so verse 21 it says be reverent to one another um in in some other verses it talks of um, i think the word that is used instead um of reverence is um just a minute, I'm just looking at it. it is submission. Okay, you will submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. So that's the uh, that's what is written there. So out of respect for Christ, be courteously reverent or be submissive to one another. Okay, verse twenty two. Wives, understand and support your husbands. Verse twenty three. Husbands provide leadership to his wife verse 24 um, um, wives should likewise submit to their husbands just as the church submits to Christ uh, as he exercises his leadership okay verse 25 husbands go out all out in your love for your wives and it describes um, what does that love mean, which we will look into. Uh, verse 31, it says, um, and this is why a man leaves 
his father and mother and cherishes his wife. So there's cherishing. And verse 31, um, and this provides a good picture of how each husband to treat his wife, loving himself and loving her, which means that is more of uh, a love that is unconditional, and how each wife is to honor her husband. Okay, moving on, I'm, I'm going to be going through the, uh, through the other verses also that's there. In Colossians 3, 18 to 19, it says, wives submit, verse 18 says, wives submit to your husbands. And verse 19 says, love, husbands love your wives. First Peter 3, verse 1 says, be good to your wife, uh, be good wives to your husbands, responsive to their needs. Okay, and verse 7 says, um, Verse 7 says, the same goes for you husbands. Be good husbands to your wives. Honor them, delight in them, uh, and treat your wives as equals so your prayers don't run, uh, uh, run aground. And if you look at the summing up in verse 8, it talks about be agreeable, be sympathetic, be loving, be compassionate, be humble. Um, no, uh, verse 9, no retaliation, no sharp tongue sarcasm. Now, this is for everybody, okay? Uh, yeah, and you'll be a blessing and also get a blessing. So, so if you look at these verses, it, it describes how husbands and wives ought to relate to one another. And it definitely sets a, a significant high standard when this is being compared to what Christ, uh, how, how Christ is to his church and the church should be to Christ. Okay, so if, if the Lord is the one who has set us the standard, we must be following it. So let us, maybe we'll summarize this and look at the key roles and responsibilities that the husband has. Um, so the first one, looking back into this, we see as love as Christ loves. So if we're looking at the way Christ loved the church, he loved uh, the church with an unconditional love. It is the God kind of love, okay? The love that goes without expecting anything back, a love that continues to go on, uh, committed and faithful and being, uh, uh, and, and something that does not change, okay? That's the love that husbands you are called to have for your wives now these is this is specified in uh the the unconditional love we're talking about is specified in the characteristics of first corinthians 13 4 to 8 what it talks about what love is okay um love being kind love being patient uh you know that entire um uh, range of uh, of love words that are there okay being patient being kind not being jealous uh, or boastful or proud, um, not wanting uh, your own way, not being uh, selfless. Love is love is not being selfish. Love is not being irritable. It does not bring back the wrongs. It is um, it it's it's always something that rejoices in the truth. It doesn't give up. It doesn't fail. Uh, does not lose faith. It's hopeful endures and something that will last forever so you have a picture of what kind of love do we love um, you know our wives now when you see this you know it's it's almost like a gasp but like i said if god has called us to do this you can be sure that he will empower you the more that you yield to to his word okay now, the kind of love that Christ has loved us with is also a sacrificial love, giving up all of himself, giving up whatever he had, stooped himself down for us, his church, gave up his life, that again showing sacrificial, uh, a sacrificial nature, and denying um, whatever he had, being uh, denying of, of, of his um, uh, denying his majesty and coming down to us as a baby, right? Now, this kind of love is also about building and enriching. So this is the love that Christ has loved the church with, an example for the husbands. The second is being able to nourish. Nourish is to encourage, 
to empower them to grow in all the graces God has intended for them. Okay, to nourish them, to nurture them also, not just uh, in encouraging them in their gifts, but also taking care of the needs that they may have, be it physical needs, their emotional needs, or their spiritual needs. So husbands, you will need to learn how to nourish your wife's emotional needs. So when she cry, comes crying to you, um, um, you know, nourishing it. So that would be not fixing it, you know, and giving her a solution, but maybe hearing her out and uh, empathizing with her on how she's feeling would be a great would be a great way of nourishing your wives. Okay. Next is to cherish. Cherish means it's um, it's like how you get a gift and you treat it special, you know, and that would be taking time to spend with, with your wife, being able to communicate and talk and discuss and openly share uh, things with your wife and allowing her to communicate as well, cherishing her by knowing that she is beautiful, she is lovely, uh, that uh, you know, you're madly in love with her. Uh, and again, this is not just about you know, the physical aspect of sex, but also in non-sexual ways. How is it that you can cherish her to show that she's special? Okay, how do you trust her? Um, you know, when, when you do trust her to make right choices or do the right things, that is also a way of cherishing. Cherishing can also be when the husband supports her in daily practices of life, when you make things easier and lighter, for for your wife and it is also when uh, the, uh, you cherish your your wife when you are the example that god has called you to be being in pursuit of the example or the calling that god has wanted so that's how you cherish your wife the fourth one is leading okay now when we're looking at leading uh, this is this uh, um, is not based on any kind of an ability, okay? Not because of your physical prowess or um, intellectual or anything, but it is because God has designed it that way. He has placed you as the leader of the home, okay? And when we look at that, when when we look at the way God designed marriage, He placed the husband as the head and the authority over the wife so that the leadership that he provides can be one of um, of love and one of service so the leadership should be the leadership that christ showed being a servant yet also being able to lead you know just like the shepherd leads the leads the um, uh, the sheep right so leadership is is all based this not on what we understand from the world around but from the example of Christ. So looking back at how Christ has been and uh, has taken on that leadership, that servant leadership, that's what the husband assumes. Okay. Leadership also means taking on the responsibility for the family in giving into whatever needs or uh, uh, provisions that the family would require, making the right decisions and guiding the, the children, uh, guiding the, the wife, uh, that's that's again another aspect of of uh, leadership that comes about. Okay, uh, the husband is also called to be uh, that loving leader, not be authoritative, not being someone who is who is a dictator. Okay, so you uh, and that happens when uh, you earn the trust and the um, submission of your wife. Also, that does not mean you, the wife does not submit if the husband is not a leader. That's not what that means. Um, you earn the wife's uh, following by being that strong example of who Christ is, of being one who is compassionate, who is responsible, who has things, um, uh, uh, you know, dealt with competently. Okay, so the husband um, being the head may not always mean that the husband may be right, as we saw in Ephesians 5.21, scripture teaches to be submissive to one another, but uh, the husband also walks in that kind of a humility 
knowing that there, there may be certain points of decisions that the wife takes, which needs to be taken into consideration. And maybe that idea may be, um, you know, collectively understood is probably better, could go with that, with that decision. So it's not always having to be right or having to follow your own heart, but also to be taking the, uh, the understanding and the decision, the opinions of the wife. The fifth one is to know your wife and what pleases her, what displeases her, the strengths, the weaknesses, what, what are her likes, her dislikes, um, what she would like to follow through, what are her pursuits, all of that comes in knowing your wife. The sixth one is honoring her, respecting her, and uh, uh, helping encourage all the gifts and graces that she's been, uh, she's been given. So these are, um, you know, uh, kind of key aspects of the role of what a husband plays in. Looking quickly at the role of a wife, um, similarly, it is love, loving your husbands. Now, this, this kind of a love is um, uh, comes from, of course, from that unconditional love and acceptance. This acceptance or this love does not come because of the performance of the husband. Okay, it is not based on the performance, but on um, uh, on the understanding, on knowing that he is God's gift to you. Okay, so the uh, so yes, there may be a lot of imperfections, a lot of flaws uh, in the way that that they, you know that that he could be, but he is loved and accepted because uh, you know that it is it is a it is a gift that God has given you. Uh, the love that we talk about here, and we see this in Genesis, uh, um, where Eve was brought to Adam as a helper. Okay, and the kind of love that we're looking at is the the love of a helper, meaning that you are the husband's best friend or someone who uh, walks alongside with him, best suited to help him in in all of life's calling. Now, this kind of a love is also sacrificial, where you uh, demonstrate that that um, uh, that out of your love for him, you have considered him as your priority, or uh, your focus, or things that you know you would like to uh, um, see in growing in him. So this th this kind of a love, just as much as it is a helper kind of a love it is just as much unconditional and sacrificial as well this love that we, uh, that uh, um, you need to have is being responsive physically responsive to his <clears throat> to his needs his physical his emotional his spiritual needs as well okay the second one is of course submit often seen as as a big um, uh, you know as a debate uh, in in many homes um, what we're looking at submission is yielding to the husband okay so so uh, when you yield to your husband you are actually permitting him to take on his role of of, of a leadership his god appointed role as a leader so in your submission you're demonstrating your trust you're demonstrating your togetherness, your support, as well as what God has instructed in um, in in that role. So, you, so when you submit, you are submitting to God and what He has appointed for your husband. Okay, your uh, the, the support that you give is done um, with with in order to complete the role of your husband, and not in the sense of a competition. Okay, submission to the husband, um, first of all, means you are in alignment with what God has, has asked of you. So that comes from an obedience. Uh, submission also helps your husband to take on that role or take on that place as a leader. Um, when, when the woman submits, when the wife submits, you're also encouraging him through your submission. So what does submission not mean? Submission does not mean that you are inferior. Neither does it mean that you have lost who you are or what uh, um, your individuality, what you like, what your what your, your identity is. And neither does it mean uh, it is a blind obedience to whatever and um, 
however he may treat you especially if you are being abused okay so the the right understanding of submission is knowing that that is a god appointed role for you and when you uh, assume that role when you live in that role you are freeing your husband to live his god appointed role submission means that you are completing the support that you're giving your husband uh, with the leadership that he is giving you and also you're encouraging him through that submission and you uh, the more that the, the, as you submit he takes on his his role of a leadership so that's that that is when it comes to submission the third one is respect respect is to um uh so i i you know i i read uh, some very beautiful um and and i can't remember where i read it uh, but it talks about how you know wives when you respect your husband you have a head of respect you have hands of respect and you have a heart of respect so a head of respect is what you think about your husband okay um because what you think is what you'll say so often you know as women when you get together there may be times that you are talking about your husband's what you actually say uh reflects your head of respect whether it's of respect or of disrespect then there's a heart of respect what you feel towards your husband um uh, you know is 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 he seen as god's gift to you as somebody who um, you know who love and you cherish and you respect so a heart of respect and hands of respect what do you do uh, to show him that you respect him maybe it is spending time it's maybe even cooking a good meal or it can be um, you know doing things that he likes or whatever it may be you know whatever it means for you to have those hands of respect so it's just not having a heart but a head as well as a hand of respect so it involves um uh, a lot of appreciation it 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 involves um uh, considering things that he does seeing it as important encouraging him at times that are difficult showing that sense of affirmation that admiration to the husband so that all comes under respecting and even thinking about him in ways that may that are respectful the fourth one of course is help uh, as as eve has been called the helper it is by uh, showing your support your assistance um your encouragement for what he does and what he wants to do to bring about the family okay so even as we looked at these different roles um we do know that you know i think all of us who are married knows that we we have no, not been um you know when we look at this as a checkbox it can be uh, quite uh, difficult to see it because we are not we may, we aren't perfect in the way that we have assumed these roles but um he has described it for us on how we need to conduct ourselves and like i said if it is our desire to grow in this he will empower us so if he has called us into something he will empower us if he has called you into marriage to to uh, to fulfill the roles that he wants you to then he will empower you because as each each of us um fulfill these roles the the marriage definitely is going to be a blessing and it leads to oneness and it leads to something that is um that 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 really exhibits god's design for marriage okay all right uh we have around 20 minutes and that's good okay um and i want to i think first uh maybe before we get questions i'd uh, probably like to hear some um ways either uh, you know we don't want to hear only perfect stories even imperfect stories uh, really help us to know that we are not alone so um any way that you feel you have fulfilled Uh, but you know or you're finding something hard to fulfill and you're really asking god for the grace to do so uh, i want to welcome some some uh, discussions and some testimonies or some sharing yes
Okay, maybe I'll start. I'll get the ball rolling. So um, one of the things that that has been that makes my husband and me different is um, uh, so by by nature, uh, you know, I have I'm I feel I need to be very organized with things I need to do. So when I get up in the morning or even the previous night, I already have some kind of a schedule for the next day saying, okay, this is all that, that, that is going to come about. These are my responsibilities. These are things I need to do. So, you know, maybe in, in a minute, I think I can scan through a day and say, okay, these are things that I have to get done. I don't may not necessarily need a paper every, you know, for daily things. So that of course, you know, puts um, uh, a sense of a very strong expectation of how things should follow. So there's almost like, it's like a flow chart. One goes in from, you know, it's one into the other. And in my head, it actually, uh, you know, works like, uh, like, like, like a machine. And uh, I'm sure there are some of you who, who actually um, identify with this with this uh, principle or with the way of of working and it's it's not just helped probably in the way that i've uh, you know do work but even how i maybe maintain a home whereas uh, you know my husband uh, you know uh, needs a lot more of um I, he's more at the moment. Okay, this is something I have to do now. That's what I will do now. Okay, that's something that I'll have to do then. I will think about it then, right? So what happened was, you know, when we had kids, um, I had significant things planned for the way that uh, maybe my kids' day go. And uh, so, so there were times that, you know, he would fumble with it and I would get upset and so much so that I would begin to assume a lot more of those roles that he could as a father do, but in a very, very different way, very unlike mine. And it was a big struggle. I, I actually, um, you know, often had to sit back, almost tie my hands and say, okay, it's okay, let it be done the way it he does it and you know it's it's good in that in the way that he does it so often i wanted to take on some of the probable roles that he had as a father because it wasn't done in the frame that i thought was perfect uh, but it took me uh, i think it took us two kids to really understand it better and um, i had to do a lot of unlearning and he had to be doing a lot of bucking up through that but it it was um, it wasn't easy. There have been times when you know there were arguments, there were um, uh, situations that we've uh, uh, yeah. So there there have been different situations that we've uh, we've struggled through that. But it it was uh, there were certain choices that we made at certain points of time to fulfill that specific role of you know letting go and allowing the other person to take on so yeah so that's been just a very broad example for me i would love to hear from others as well since i got the ball rolling and gave you a very poor example of how i managed initially have i put all of you to sleep with my bedtime story I don't hear anybody. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes, sir. go yeah. ahead. Yeah. Um, you, you have you have a story, Sam? <laughs> I have so many, so I'm just picking on fun. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, but um, I think uh, a little similar, um, uh, but also a little different is um, I I am I think. Uh, out of me and my wife, uh, I'm the one who uh, plans things and uh, needs things to go according to the plan. Um, and also, uh, in a way that uh, like this thing that uh, uh, no one, I mean, I, if, if it has to be done right, I have to do it uh, kind of thing. I, I can do it the best way, the way I want it. Um, 
that I think uh, would often uh, uh, so in, in an attempt to do everything uh, and uh, and uh, see yeah in an attempt to do a, a lot I think uh, uh, one is I would enjoy it but uh, over time with kids I have two kids now I think. Uh, uh, it created a lot of frustration in me where uh, I was not able to do a lot. And also, uh, we both realized uh, in a very hard way that I had actually, uh, not by not letting uh, Puna, my wife, uh, uh, actively uh, be my helper, but more like a dependent, which, which you know, I, I, I mean, that's kind of not to exaggerate, but spoiled her in a lot of ways where, uh, you know, I would end up doing most of the things Then uh, she would just wait on me. But with the kids, then it became too much and I started getting too, too frustrated. And then, uh, but, you know, we learned uh, a lot of lessons that way. And then I realized that I have to depend on her more and, uh, and let go of uh, the control and this need to do everything and have it done. Uh, initially, it was difficult, but uh, over, I think it's been two years now, I think two to three years, where um, she, like, we are, I think earlier, if what was 90 uh, 10 is now more like a 50 50. And um, yeah, it's, it's uh, for me, it's very liberating uh, uh, that, uh, you know, I don't have to worry so much. But at the same time, I've uh, come to appreciate. Uh, and admire my wife's strength, courage uh, to take on so much uh, of all the responsibilities. And and um, I realize now that, you know, from early on, if I had done this, if I had realized this and done it, we would have avoided so many, um, so many, I think, heartaches and fights and issues and uh, um, all of those things. Uh, yeah, so... Thank That's you. my <laughs> overview <laughs> without getting into specifics, just in a broad <laughs> detail. Yeah. I appreciate that. Appreciate your honesty. Yeah. Anybody else? Or if you'd like questions, we have another 10 minutes. You can throw up a yeah. question. If, if I want. can share my experience. Yes, honey. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah. No, mine is arranged marriage. And uh, the thing is that uh, I'm from Mumbai and he is from Bangalore born and brought, like I'm born and brought up there. So our lifestyle, our, our uh, talking style, everything is different. And uh, in South, like it is maybe like more point and more more to the point that would, they would talk. But uh, in Mumbai, it is very different. <laughs> like you talk to even uh, like elderly in a friendly manner and all that. So many a times it would happen that he would, he would not understand my manner of speaking. He would feel that he is disrespected and uh, that and it was like um, uh, we had different time shift shift timing working he used to work in night shift I used to work in day shift so there was no time even to communicate so well and uh, like very difficult to breach that gap over the period of time then we have had a child and when she was to fall, fall sick he had his type of uh, treatment no, we should uh, like uh, you know when any uh, babies fall sick and that thing what mother wants to do is different what father wants to do is different and everything is clashing then we are thinking that what is going to happen with the child like that I, I went through all that but in all of this uh, like there were times it was very difficult to put everything together we thought uh, like he used to speak and I also used to think that no it is not going anywhere like that but uh, i used to pray god god uh, like uh, it is your will that we should not we should not set apart we have we have to be together till death makes us apart so and i just keep focusing on god and do my part because this is not the thing that i can talk and sort out which has to be something uh, like i Maybe a, a behavioral uh, changes behavior behave uh, each other's uh, attitudes to understand it. It's more of a time to spend with each other to actually understand each other's perspective. So we ha I had to give that time. I just submitted everything into God's hand, and now I can say that yes, I'm enjoying my marriage. 
Thank you, Thank Anita. You. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Nisha, for sharing too. Yeah, I can, you know, these, these situations can be hard when you do not get support from a spouse and um, the burden falls heavily on one spouse. Um, and uh, so much more when nothing works, right? Um, I, I, I'd say, you know, bring it to the Lord because change of heart comes from the Lord. A lot of times when we may not know, like, like we said, there are so many cultural expectations or cultural ways that things are done that to know that you know it is okay to support your spouse at even household shows um, it can be a revelation in itself so to bring it to the lord don't be discouraged um, I, I know maybe a lot of us feel the way that uh, nisha feels but don't be discouraged uh, god sees god uh, god will you be faithful in what you need to do and uh, attempt you know attempt talking sharing bringing it up because there can be a change that can come by yes uh, harrison i think you've raised your hand either for a question or for sharing okay um thank you very much for the privilege um i want to share a little thing about my marriage and it's a very good um it's a very good cause for me and I'm paying so much attention to it because there's so much and I really want to learn from it. And in my own case, I'm an African and my wife is a European. And it's a very huge difference, you know, the cultural background is so different. And when I when I reflect back on when we started, it was very tough. There was no agreement and the controlling was more from her. And as an African, you know, you have this cultural cultural feeling of taking position, taking responsibility, and so on and so forth. But coming up, you know, from a Christian background, there's so many things I've learned, you know, and from my father, he would say that. If I can give it time, everything will blend. Mm. And one thing I applied in my marriage, you know, was patience. Yeah, it was patience, you know, because in those moments, you know, where you feel like going crazy, you just need the grace of God, you know, to be able to like, you know, look deeper into that situation and ask yourself, what is this situation trying to tell me? what is this problem trying to teach me and it has been it has been a process for us you know to come to this level of understanding because looking at you know her cultural background and my my own cultural background we came to an agreement it's okay instead of us you know trying to like you know live up you know with your own beliefs or maybe you live up to my own beliefs why don't we come up you know with a with a belief that you know that is recognized by just you and i so that we have a common ground you know to operate in this marriage and the only thing you know that comes into my mind is to have a belief in the bible let's come up with a cultural belief that is drawn from the bible that binds us together that keeps us together that makes us you know no matter where we find ourselves this is who we are and this is what we stand for so it's not like you know we are bound you know to the cultural um, background you know, that we are coming from and this you know has really helped us you know to be able to be able to manage things you know, as they come and i could say that okay when it comes to like you know cooking my wife you know cannot cook you know the african food but I do the cooking and I've been doing the cooking and there are so many things, you know, I may want to like, you know, you know, 
portray, you know, to like, you know, make her feel bad, you know, that she cannot cook the African food. But this is something I'm saying, okay, there is nothing in it. As far as, you know, we understand who we are and we know where, where we're going to because it's also good, you know, that we guide ourselves, you know, with a focus. You know, what is the common goal for the, for the home? In as much as we have our individual goals, what is the common goal for the home? So I think this, you know, has really helped us, you know, to really shape our minds towards the course in that we find ourselves. So I just want to like, you know, chip in this in that patience is really, really important in marriage because if we cannot be patient, we may not really get what God, you know, has for us. Thank you. Thank you, Harrison. Thank you. So true that even through the challenges that we may have in marriage, especially when we're looking at roles, um, I so agree with Harrison that often when we're going through difficulties, we may want to see change in the other person. But to ask ourselves the question, God, what are you teaching me through this? What do you want me to learn? What do you want me to change? are bold questions. And uh, when we willingly submit to that, um, you know, and leave the change of our spouse to God, he can do wonders with them. So, yeah, I want to encourage, I think you have a lot of encouraging messages, Nisha, your way, and maybe those of us who haven't spoken, um, those of us who may be going through significant struggles in our marriages, uh, I think we'll just take maybe the next couple of minutes to just pray. And uh, maybe just, uh, uh, I'd, I'd like one person to pray and then I will also close in prayer. Um, if we can um, just pray in the spirit for some time and release words or release what God has in his heart for maybe some of us who may be struggling here to hold on with hope, okay? So we'll just take a few minutes to pray. Uh, one of you can pray first and then I will close as well. Yeah. Okay, we'll pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and we bless your name because you're a great God. Thank you for what you have opened our eyes to see and what you have opened our mind to understand. Thank you because the words that we hear will help us, O God, to build a better home. Thank you, O God, because the words, O God, that we've heard today, O God, we not just drop void, you know, but Father, we bear good fruit in our homes because we know that your this our your marriage you know, represents your kingdom. And we pray, Father, that you will give us the grace of God to see beyond our human imaginations and see what you have for us in our marriages. We thank you, Father, because that these words that we hear will not just bring a change, you God, but will make us stronger in our homes, make us stronger in our marriage. We thank you, O God, for your servant, our lecturer, and everyone that is in this classroom. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you will guide us and you will guard us. We pray, Lord, that you will help us, O God, to fulfill all purposes, O God, in our marriages, that your church may be glorified. We ask, O God, that as we continue, O God, in this lectures we continue in this course we pray that you give us deeper understanding to what you have designed for marriage thank you heavenly father because we know that we will hear great testimonies in our home and not problems for this i pray to christ our lord jesus amen amen, amen. heavenly father we just come to you to your throne of grace Lord, I thank you for every one of us who's logged in today. 
Lord, some of this, Lord, that we hear today are your truths, your instructions for us. But Lord, we see how far we are away from what you want for us, Lord. And God, right now, by the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, I pray that you will reach out to each one of us into our homes, into our relationships, into our own hearts, that you will bring us in alignment to your word as, ha as hard as it can be. Lord, we bring before you each one of us who may feel unloved in our marriages, who feel we aren't respected. Lord, I speak the love of God to fill these hearts in such a manner that they experience for their partners, for their spouses. Lord, I pray you take away the pain of difficult moments over years that have gone by, a heart of unforgiveness that many of us may be carrying, a heart of resentment towards some things that has been said or done. You teach us to be respectful, but we may have not been, Lord, in our lives together. We come to you, ask you for forgiveness, repenting, Lord, that we do not want to walk those ways again. Lord, we pray that you will meet each person at their point of need. Lord, I speak for the husbands on this call. Lord, that they will take on their placement, Lord, their divine placement of being leaders of the home, of being servant leaders, of being leaders who know the best for their, for their kith and for their kin, the, those leaders who will be willing to draw the line, Lord, those leaders who will be willing, Lord, to sacrifice themselves for that of their, their family, Father. Lord, I pray that you will give them the boldness to stand, Lord, to take those responsibilities, be it financial, be it, um, be it emotional, be it whatever that they need to take, Father, that they will be those leaders that you have called them to be, that they will step out in faith, Master God. Lord, I pray, God, that they will be willing to love their wives, to give of themselves, Master. Lord, I pray for every husband that is being represented here, Lord, and, and the husbands who aren't here, Lord, the wives who represent their husbands. Father, I speak, God, that, that you will teach them from your word, instruct them from your word on how to conduct themselves in their homes, Lord. Lord, we pray, God, that you will, you will bring them, Lord, to a greater revelation of what is expected of them as husbands. Lord, we pray for us as wives, Lord, for those of us who are wives, Lord, representing the wives who aren't here, Lord. Lord, we pray, God, that you will teach us submission the way you demanded, you wanted us to, Lord, allowing, Lord, our husbands to take on their leadership, Lord. Lord, to know, God, that it is instituted for us, Lord, to be those helpers, to be kind and respectful, to be willing to take on the, the authority that, that you've placed over us, Father. Lord, even in situations that may be hard, may we submit to you at times where we cannot bring sense into our spouse, Lord, or, or speak um, understanding. Father, we submit it to you, Lord. Lord, I pray for uh, each person here on this call, God, who are going through difficult times today, who've had uh, an altercation in the past week because of these roles that have not been fulfilled. Father, we pray for the supernatural work of your spirit to iron things out, bring understanding, Lord, bring wisdom, bring knowledge, Lord, Lord, bring practical guidance, Lord, for each one of our life situations. Lord, we look to you. We desire so much, Lord, to be in tune with your word and your instruction for us. And we pray, God, that you will help us, God, help us in those daily moments that we struggle with, Lord those times of tears that we that we have lord that you will you will give us that hope and that encouragement we look to you god for the freedom that we would like in our marriage lord as couples father thank you because your blessing is there lord when your spirit spirit comes freely 
to, to renew us and to strengthen us. Thank you, God. Thank you for everyone who's on this call. Minister to each one, Lord, as they have cried out to you today, Father. Lord, answer them. Answer them. May their marriage be what you have called them to be. And may they find joy. May they find peace. And may, Lord, may each one of us fulfill your purposes for our homes and our families. Thank you, good God. In Jesus' precious, matchless name, I pray. Amen. All right. God bless. Thank you so much. Uh, we will meet again next week. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. God Thank bless. you, Pastor. Bye-bye. Thank you, ma'am.